welcome to High Density. Today we're going to be talking about something called internet broadcasting. It's a little different to normal television and we're going to explain why that is. Yeah, internet broadcasting doesn't just mean watching television over the net because that's what you can do with several programs also. But uh, the internet broadcasting means picking your own television shows from the net and downloading them and watching them locally on your computer. Making your own TV station in essence, compiling the shows you like, putting them together and watching them at your leisure. Yeah, and uh, one example of a piece of software that allows you to do that sort of thing is the Miro player which we have here in this laptop. Uh -huh. And Miro is actually a completely free service, you don't have to pay. No, you don't have to pay. It's not only free, it's also the source code is out there and uh, you're invited to even participate in developing this thing. So if you're a super technical person, you can actually improve the service? Yes, you Correct. can. The service or the software itself. Okay, but having a look at it right here on the screen, um, we've got something that looks a little bit like a web browser with what looks like familiar iTunes-ish options on the left. Yes, it's a mishmash of those two things. As you can see here, the important thing is the Miro guide because, uh -huh. uh, as I said, there's lots of stuff out there, but how to find it? And this is how you find it? This is how you find it. The Miro guide is basically an online television listing, like an interactive news listing of what's there. Yes, as you can see here on the main page, you have the latest channels uh -huh. just uh, flying by here in this right. line. And down here, every time you open it, you will see a different category highlighted. Right. And there's the popular stuff, of course, stuff that's popular today and stuff that just came up. Okay. And um, at the top there, we've got popular, featured, new, HD categories. Yeah, let's take a look at popular. Okay. This, of course, girls, always popular, number one spot. Right. Uh, but we've got National Geographic, Comedy Central, Science Channel, some big names broadcasting. Yeah, Hubblecast from the NASA. That's what, showing pictures from the Hubble telescope? Yeah. Riveting. And, uh, it's very nice. <laughs> well, it's in HD, which we'll get to later. Frontline news. Okay, wait. Let's say I wanted to get frontline news. I mean, okay. I'm looking at the picture. How do I get it so I make my own station with frontline news content? What do I do? Well, the only thing you need to do is press add here. Couldn't okay. be simpler. I hit, hit add, and it, it. what does it do? Okay. Now, what happened is it went down here okay. into my list of things that I've subscribed to. Okay. And it went up here and started downloading the latest clip immediately. Okay, so it's downloading the latest show mm -hmm. onto my computer. Yeah, we can look at this here. Okay, and here this, is, this is what Frontline is offering us right now. Yes, these are the topics. Okay, and let's say I download some Frontline stuff um, and I download some other stuff. How do I put it together to make my personal TV show? That's what you have this library up here for. Okay. In the library, you can see all the stuff that you this already is have. All the stuff you went and got off the guide. Yes, that's it. Okay. And what do you do to kind of construct it into some order? Well, you just uh, pick this thing right. and drop it into a playlist. Okay. Of course, you can make new ones. This Play is just the example. Playlists work exactly the same as with the music things like iTunes and all of that. Yes, exactly. Okay. A very familiar concept. Right. And then when you're happy with what you put over there, you can just go to your playlist. Okay. I have some more items in here from earlier. Human head found in hamburger. Mm. This is from the Onion News Network. Very nice There's satire place. A bit more accurate than Fox, for instance. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So you can just you play the first one, it plays through all of them. Okay, so that's it. You just construct what you want, hit go, and off you go. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And Miro is available on the net, free of charge, to anyone who goes along. Mm -hmm. um, something we saw there in the guide I'd like to bring our topic to. Uh, High definition. Yes, high definition. Uh -huh. What many, many people don't realize that their computer at home is already a high definition screen. In most cases, I mean, anything bought in the last two or three years is capable of displaying HD stuff. Right. And this Miro guide contains more HD content than anyone else, even if you include uh, channel, um, cable channels that you can subscribe to offline. So, I mean, everyone's talking. HD nowadays, they're saying you've got to buy HD televisions and all of that. But the fact is, most of your computers can play HD stuff anyway without mm -hmm. buying a new screen. And with something like the Miro Guide, you've got a huge repository of HD material right there. You just click, download, and you've got it. Yes. That's pretty cool. And not a lot of people seem to know that. No, well, it's uh, sort of seeping in right now. <laughs> just, just beginning to hit. Yeah. Well, I mean, the same kind of stuff happened with podcasting, I think, a couple of years ago. For a long time, there were all these great, great shows out there. No one knew about them. And now it's become a phenomenon. 
Yes, I mean, even uh, some podcast people are signing up with radio channels nowadays. Right. So that's what you get. Now, Miro allows you to pull other people's content, make your own TV station. But this is the modern internet we're talking about. And one of the defining characteristics of the modern internet is that it isn't just one way. It's, it's a two-way thing. It's interactive, which logically means that if you can watch their stuff, there must be a way for you to put your stuff out there as well. Yeah, and the Miro people help you with that too. They've put together a guide that shows you how to format your content and where to put it and how to get it into the Miro guide. And so you can easily make your own channel in the Miro guide. And basically, it's only as technical as creating uh, a blog. Yeah. You need a blog, and then there's a service that uh, turns your blog into a sort of media blog so that all the media files end up properly formatted, etc. And then it can go into the guide. And that, that pops onto Miro. Um, would other kind of systems be able to pick up on your broadcast, like iTunes? Yes, the Miro guide itself is, of course, also available with iTunes. And okay. the service that formats your blog also formats it for iTunes. So you get two buttons. You can have one button that says Add to Miro, and the other one that says Add to iTunes. That's all it is. So in short, this is a two-way thing. You can broadcast yourself over the net. You can watch other people's shows. You can watch shows from big-name providers like National Geographic. It's all flowing back and forth pretty freely. Mm -hmm. Next question. When we're talking flowing back and forth pretty freely, people will probably start to think of file sharing, lawsuits, how is this legal? You know, they saw National Geographic stuff on the Miro guide um, and they're thinking, well, isn't that file sharing? And I think, you know, we better put their minds at rest. Yeah, with this Miro player at least and with the Miro guide, you get the stuff directly from the people who make it. So they're basically licensing it to you, so it's all legal to get. And the Miro player is not part of any peer-to-peer -peer network. You're not sharing with other people that use Miro. You're just getting stuff from the providers. In other words, people are broadcasting direct to you. This isn't illegal. It's perfectly above board. Yeah, in some cases, they even encourage you to share your stuff with others. So you can download stuff, you can burn it to CDs, you can give it to friends. It's all fine. It's called liberal licensing, and it's becoming really prevalent nowadays, I think. It's, it's really becoming more and more obvious on the net that you can share more things legally. Yes, especially with this user-generated content, with this, which this is, of course. Right. Uh, this has become much more popular these days. I guess one of the next big topics is we've been talking about how cool it is, what it can do, how you can be part of it, but we haven't told people where they can go. I mean, where do people go to get the Miro player? How do they get started with watching stuff? How do they get started with broadcasting? And, and the answer is surprisingly simple. <laughs> yeah, it's all at getmiro.com. That's right. So it's, it's getmiro.com, and you can learn how to watch shows, broadcast shows, the whole deal. It's not technical either. No, not very technical. It's just the bare minimum. If you, if you know how to operate a camcorder, you know how to put stuff onto Miro. Right, and if you know how to click on a web page, then you know how to watch stuff that's being broadcasted over the internet. So it's, it's literally almost granny material. Almost. Almost. We're getting there. Okay, I think that about wraps it up as a mm -hmm. quick introduction to internet broadcasting. It's a pretty cool phenomenon. And we're still at the early stages, I think. Yeah, but I think interesting times are ahead, so you right. should check it out so you're in the loop. Two or three years down the road, this will probably be the norm when it comes to sharing a lot of material. Yeah, I think so. Well, thanks for watching High Density, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs>